everyone, and welcome to the Alita Battle Angel live chat. I'm John Landau, one of the producers of the film, and we are live streaming on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube in over 30 countries worldwide and translated in multiple languages in real time. We'll take you behind the scenes today to help answer the questions that you've been submitting to us around the world. And I'm delighted to introduce you to my good friends, Jim Cameron, Rosa Salazar, and Robert Rodriguez. Robert, is there something you want to share with the fans? Something I've been waiting to show all morning. <laughs> it's yeah, uh, a very, uh, you know, a peek at an uh, epic story about a very unique character in an incredible world. Take your look at Alita Battle Angel. There you go. Du hast mir die Geschichte vom Krieg erzählt, als die Erde ja zitterte und der Himmel brannte. Von denen, die überlebt haben. die erwacht sind in einer anderen Welt, in der die Mächtigen die Schwachen ausbeuten. Aber so muss es nicht sein. Als ich dich fand, war dein sehr menschliches Gehirn auf wundersame Weise intakt. Nichts fühlt sich einsamer an, als nicht zu wissen, wer man ist. Mit der Zeit kommt die Erinnerung. Alita ist neu hier. Sie hat noch einiges zu lernen. Es ist eine grausame Welt. Ich zeig dir was. Ich spüre eine Verbindung zu ihm, die ich nicht erklären kann. Du weißt mehr über mich, als du sagst. Alita, es gibt Dinge, die man besser vergisst. Nein! Dann werde ich es selbst rausfinden. Alita, lauf! Die letzte ihrer Art. In ihr stecken Technologien, die 300 Jahre lang verloren waren. Sie ist eine Gefahr für die natürliche Ordnung. Alita, sie werden dich holen. Dann werde ich mich ihnen stellen. Bring dich in Sicherheit, du musst hier weg. Heute Nacht ist kein Spiel. Es ist eine Jagd. Du musst sie zerstören. Du hast gerade den größten Fehler deines Lebens gemacht. Ich gehöre zu ihr. Alita Battle Angel. Nur im Kino. Sure, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, finally, we get to share something with the audiences around the world. And Jim, I want to start with you with a question from King Kong Cali in the UK. Okay. What brought your really attention? King Kong? That, that's his okay. username. <laughs> what, what brought your attention to the manga itself and what this made you decide to turn it into a movie? Well, it's an interesting history going back, I'd have to say at this point, almost 20 years. Uh, Guillermo del Toro, who's a very good friend of mine, uh, director, Shape of Water, all that stuff, um, turned me on to the, the anime. And it was a short anime that had been done from a kind of a mashup of the first couple of books of uh, Alita Battle Angel. Uh, that's uh, uh, Yukito Kishiro's manga, which we've all been living with for the last, mm -hmm. last few years. And uh, I love the, the anime just for its kind of poignant, simple, simple story. Um, and then I, I went out and I researched, I read all, the, read all the books. I think there were nine or ten books at that time. And uh, we decided to, uh, to get the rights to it and start to develop it as a film. And it was for me to direct. But then, you know, I went through a few iterations of the script and I, I wound up doing Avatar instead. And it was almost, a, it was literally practically a coin toss. We were developing them both in parallel. And I, I thought I was going to do Alita, Alita and then Battle Angel, I mean, uh, Avatar pulled ahead. And uh, so then, uh, you know, a couple of years after that, a few years after that, Robert and I were hanging out. And we'd, we'd just been hanging out for like three hours, just <laughs> gossiping and being they pals. They hang out. <laughs> we hang out, yeah. And uh, so he's getting in his car, you know, and the car door's about to close. And he says, so you got anything? 
you know, like an afterthought, total afterthought. And, I, and in a split second, I thought, I'm not going to get a chance to do Battle Angel for a long time. So I'm doing all these Avatar sequels. So I handed it to him, handed him the baton. Yeah, that's the rest is history. Mostly, you mostly do material that you create yourself, but yeah, you saw yeah. something in the character and in the world that made you say, ah, you know what, I want to adapt that, which yeah. I thought was very interesting, which yeah. made me interested in the project. Too. Right, and then you adapted my adaptation, and I adapted that became you. the shooting script. You wrote the, the shooting script. And what, I could, what I saw about it was um, very unique. It was, it, it was similar to some of your other, you know, like Sarah Connor and Ripley, but instead of a, someone with a, a very heartfelt character finding their warrior spirit, this had the reverse twist, That's which right. is someone who had a warrior spirit already yeah. and had to discover her heart. And, yeah. I, and I could see immediately why you responded to it. And, yeah. and that's so, what got me one. That, that brings us to a question from Lewis from Yorkshire. Robert, how, what was the experience like collaborating with director James Cameron Alita? A huge fan of your work and very excited for the film. Keep rocking. <laughs> well, I mean, I described the living I went to, hell of I went creative to, process. I went to school, first of all, in, in Jim's movies. When I was dreaming about making movies, he was already doing it. And I was studying Terminator and The Abyss and Aliens and, and going to school and all of that. And then I, and I met Jim and I became friends 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. And uh, we're into 3D and, and, and into doing multiple jobs on the set so we, we kind of had a kinship and how we like to do things but mm -hmm. I always looked up to him as someone who's very masterful because of the mastery that he had accomplished by always pushing the envelope and very high-tech filmmaking that was always surrounded only a, a, a story that was purely about character and heart so he, he had something that no one else had so you, you try to emulate guys like that and when I and we tried to work together for many years around times before Sin City on mm -hmm, one project mm -hmm. and then later on something else because we enjoyed each other's company and, and vision of yeah. what we do but um, but me know he's always knowing I would be learning from him more than he would ever learn from me well so, this is not quite true because I've been going to school on you for years as well <laughs> I mean Sin City for sure absolutely I mean your whole deconstructed way of working against green screen and all that and so so graphic and powerful I mean you just you just blew it up with that so I just knew it was going to be a fertile you know, kind of collaboration. And I think, you know, looking looking back on it now, I think we can both say that it was pretty satisfying because, yeah. you know, I left you alone on the set. You know, you're a big boy, you know how to direct a movie. I came down once just to say hi so the actors knew <laughs> I actually was on the film. And one, I remember one day, right? We were in shots that day too, so it actually, yeah, that's yeah, true. Actually, really motivated. <laughs> yeah. there. We were in Video often. Village, yeah. And I remember I was standing there next to you, and uh, we were watching the screen as they were setting up the next thing, and you went, "I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go." It's like I was like, "Really?" And you're like, "Yeah, if, if I, I know when to leave now before I start touching lights." <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. I'm like, exactly. That's right. and he well, left. If Robert, I stay a minute longer, I'm gonna start suggesting <laughs> shit. I know there were times during the production where you maybe would ping Jim an email, even though he wasn't on the set, where you'd send him an email and what yeah, type I mean, of... We, we got way into the weeds early on in the process. Really, he would come down to Austin, I would come up, and we would discuss it. And then when I was on the set, I could even email him a question, uh, hoping he'd have some time to just take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Within a couple of hours, he'd send me back long answers, <laughs> very detailed, very genuine. I, I would, I have a whole side, you know, Word document it's probably like over a couple hundred pages now, just what I learned from Jim. <laughs> he so, teaches you, he's, he's, he teaches you as, as you right. go, and you get to learn things that you never did before. One of the main things he taught me day one in Jim Cameron's science fiction filmmaking class was, and this was his approach to movies, and it clicks and it suddenly makes sense, is that you're gonna have a very fantastical world in a science fiction world, and, and the audience is gonna believe in that world. You have to ground everything. Everything has to ground in reality. And that's totally different from anything that I ever do. Right. So I, I like immediately. Because you go way out to I the edge. I go way out to yeah. the edge, and yeah. it's like totally makes sense why you can buy into the, the most extreme sci fi concepts in his films. And so we strove for that realism. And well, the like realism when she starts with character. With exactly. character. Yeah. Rosa. Yeah. And, and with yeah. casting. And, uh, so, Rosa, a question for you from India, from Susmit in India. How challenging was it for you to play the role of Alita, and how did you prepare yourself for the role? Uh, how did I prepare myself for the role? Well, I was lucky enough to have um, you guys to support me in doing that. Uh, I remember, Jim, you sent an email to Robert, said we should get her into training right now, which we were about six months out, mm -hmm. so that you don't, you know, get two takes out of her. And then she's spent. And, and I really 
And know, so that you could kick took ass. that, and I do, and I now I <laughs> do, do kick ass. She does. Um, but it was, it's true, even, even um, per, pretending to be Alita was uh, exhausting because she's so capable, her body is, you know, uh, it's a machine. So it's, um, even pretending to be her, you know, was uh, exhausting and it was, it, it challenged me to the nth degree. I mean, uh, you guys had me in training with Keith Hirabayashi, mm -hmm. who I mm -hmm. adore who taught me that martial arts is not only a physical strength, but also um, uh, balancing and finding harmony within yourself, uh, finding your chi, um, you know, harnessing the tiger, not just being the tiger. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I studied with him two hours uh, five, every day, five days a week, and it, I was transformed. When I walked in there, I was made out of croissants. You know, um, <laughs> you had a big hand in shaping my diet, which I now carry on. We're still working on that. Uh, you know, and, <laughs> and it was so helpful that we had the previs, the artwork that you guys put together so that I could start to understand her movements and because um, she has a very unique uh, movement and the way that she stands and, and her physical mm -hmm. um, nature mm -hmm. uh, is very, you know, otherworldly. So uh, that was challenging, getting, getting into shape, getting strong, and I, and I felt strong. Yeah. And it was also and acted, about that. You acted yes, that strength. Yes, and it comes from yeah. that. Yeah. It doesn't just happen, one doesn't happen without the other. When you are on a physical journey, transforming into a character, that other part is also in training. And I think another thing you did was you immersed yourself in the graphic novels that Kishiro wrote. And I know that yes. because when Kishiro <laughs> came and visited us on the set, you were up there, can you autograph my, my, <laughs> my, my dog eared, all of the tabs, yeah. stickers. And I even, I had this, the, you know, your process calls to you every diff every movie you do, every project you do, your process becomes a little different. Mm -hmm. Obviously with the performance capture suit, uh, that, that was another part of it. But uh, one interesting part about it is that I printed out every single page of the first book, um, you know, of Gunnam, mm -hmm. and I colored it because I wanted to spend time <laughs> with her. I had already read the books. That's fantastic. I had already done the never notes. Of that. I had already <laughs> read your, uh, um, you know, your five page declaration on Alita, which by the way, you could win WGA awards for as emails. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason there's a separate folder, but <laughs> I spent time with her and I wanted to care about her as much as you guys do. You guys, you guys, um, especially you guys. Yeah. You spent so much time with her and caring about her, and I like the way you say it. We needed to find the right people to raise her together. <laughs> yeah. um, and we so that was the, a challenge. We have the benefit now of having seen the film. You know, we live with it, but we've seen it, and we see how you are the, the living, beating heart center of the movie. You know, and Thank we you. knew that very early on, that you were kind of our ace in the hole, that the visual effects would be big and expensive and spectacular and all that, but it all focuses on you. Well, that's what I like about both of you. Uh, it's, for me, being around you two and watching your films and going to your schools uh, of, of, of making film, you know, you both are engineering on the site. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're, and it, and it makes, it's not surprising to me that you have Weta because they do the same thing. Yeah. They're on set and they're creating in the moment. And mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when I watch you know behind the scenes of Sin, Sin City and how you use the black and white against the green screen, it's just it's it's brilliant. And um, and I wanted to be a, a part of that. And when I see Alita on the screen, I see myself. And you both care so much about the acting. It's very important. So Robert, yeah. Yeah. in the casting process. What is it about, this is from Lizzie in Mexico City, what gave Rosa the edge over all the other actresses that you auditioned? She absolutely affected me the moment she came in and did the scenes. I was affected in a way I had never been in a, just a casting room, you know, and I watched the tape afterwards and, and sure enough it happened again then. I even jumped the gun a little and sent it immediately to Jim <laughs> thinking, you know, we still have a lot of people to see, but if we had to shoot tomorrow, this is very promising. What do you think about this? Yeah. Do you remember your reaction? Yeah, I, th I said, we're done. <laughs> you know? And Robert said, whoa, 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 slow down, slow down. They still have to see this person, this person, this person. It's like, okay, you can see them, but we're going to cast her. Yeah, I mean, and, and this process, this, this performance capture that you guys do, I mean, we say it at the beginning, but I didn't really know from experience that the, the performance of the actor is truly it it's one to one throughout all the through. way through mm. and drives it. And so mm -hmm. I knew the casting would be important, but when we... Now that I've been through the process, you really see every nuance of her performance down to the sweat on her eye on the set that day. 
in the character, which helps the technology go away. Because at the end of the day, this has to be about a character that we really believe is there and that is as real um, as any other character, which is why we shot it very grounded and very real with real actors on real sets. So that you never were that you never the process doesn't pull you out of the movie, right? And then you can go with the spectacle that's being presented, and the very heartfelt journey that's being presented. Well, when you when you are up for a role that's completely in uh, performance capture, I remember. I, by the way, I only say performance capture, and I remember in the beginning I would say motion capture, motion capture, you know, because that's what you mo hear a lot. Mo cap, mo cap, the buzzword of mo cap, and I remember you going, "It's performance capture." I'm like, okay. But as I went along the process, I was like, this is performance capture. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the bits and pieces that were starting to be edited, I was like, this is, perf it's, she's more human than human. Yeah. When I see her, that's what I feel. I feel, it's, it's not jarring in the sense it's like, whoa, like this is a crazy trick, but it's, it's me. And, I, and when I first, you know, uh, uh, got the role and started, I'm like, I'm wondering how much of my performance is going to be there. Because mm. as an artist, especially concern, us yeah. as artists, we're very protective over our mm -hmm, craft. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it, I was, I was even more impressed because I was like, it's, it's me. And you even put things on her face that are on my face that I wish weren't on my face. <laughs> she's more, she's so me. And it's, yeah. It's amazing when you watch the film how quickly you forget. Yeah. That you that you can't possibly be real, yeah. Because your eyes are so big and your face is so heart shaped, and and, and it's a very stylized look, which comes right from the the manga. Staying it's a, true you're to the you're, work, yeah. you're a living manga character. I would say in the first couple minutes, you just forget about it, and you're yeah. watching Except Alita. Alita becomes a person. Yeah, and you're with her. Yeah. You want to be with her. Yeah, and you forget about it. Yeah. It, it. You have to remind yourself that 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 visual effects are involved. So Which Robert, beautiful. from Helmet in Germany, um, other than Rosa, you have a great cast. Yeah. Tell us about the rest of the cast. Oh my gosh, we got, you know, Stuff. Christoph Waltz right off the bat, somebody that, you know, I've known through Quentin's movies, but always wanted to work with. And uh, when I started imagining him doing, rereading the script with him in mind, it's like, oh my God, we have to get Christoph. Yeah. He would, mm. he would give all of these, you know, even scenes about technology so much weight and heart that, that you that would disappear. And you're now just listening to someone who's really passionate about what they do and who's passionate about raising this daughter in this, in this crazy world, a daughter who has a lot of power. And what do you do with that power? And how do you direct that power and not abuse mm. it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a, it's a very timeless story that just ends up being very timely right now. And the father-daughter love story is at least as strong as the, the boy-girl love story. Yeah. I mean, that was the most powerful for me. I, I was so close with my father mm -hmm. that, uh, that this was an amazing cathartic experience. You know, I get to relive that relationship, that very special bond. I mean, the rest of the cast, for me, I'm, I'm a craft nerd. I love, I love mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. I love what I do, and I love the craft. And so to work with so many... I want to say character Conway. actors, but mm -hmm. all good actors are character actors. I mean, but you have all of these amazing, I was like a kid in a candy store. Mahershala, Mahershala Jackie Earl Haley, yeah. oh, Jennifer right. Connelly, yeah. a newcomer, Kian Johnson, yeah, who just wowed all of us. He's going to steal everybody's hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Hiro from Japan Hi, Hiro. wants to know, what can you tell us about Kian? <laughs> <laughs> Kian? Come on. Is a brilliant. Good kisser. Good kisser. <laughs> Sophia, if you're watching, you know. Um, Kian is so open. Kian is such a kind, curious uh, person. He's, he's, he emanates positivity, positivity, positivity. He's mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. looking for the silver lining. Uh, he's <laughs> never down. And working with someone for months and months and months, in, in, you know, and you're in the process, and I'm in the suit. You, you, you want to have someone on your yeah. side that's like that, yeah. who's just full of life and buoyant and just wants to, you know, get really good at this. And, yeah. and he is really good at this. He has such raw ability mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> and like, that's, that's the whole thing. A dreamer aspect of yeah, he's a dreamer. Like yeah. He's, he's a photographer. He's a dancer. He's been dancing since he was nine. He's, an, he's a full blown artist. Um, but he's also like not cynical at all. No. Which is so hard to find you have to in this find town. A young man, because that's Alita. That's what the character matches up with the character of mm -hmm. Alita. So to find a young man who's that focused and that, and that just sort of pure of heart, yet has a very focused mind. He came from Broadway. I mean, he has a Billy really Elliot hard work, discipline, I mean. 
work ethic. Um, I was just amazed by the guy, and I knew that he would really deliver for us. Well, we're on Alita's journey, and so we see everything through her big brown eyes. Right. You know, we see the world through her eyes. We see Hugo through her eyes, mm -hmm. and we have to feel. We have to see how she can so quickly fall in love with him. Right. We have to believe in that. Mm -hmm. And I think Kian brings that quality. And I remember there was the balance of bad boy versus, right. you know, vulnerable boy. And he's also a dark character. Yes, and so it was, you had to find that balance, right. which is, yeah. oh my gosh, I don't wish casting on anybody because it's so, it seems so hard to me. It's a yeah. specific talent. You, you go for someone who, like, has the heart because you can yeah. find people who have the dark quality but you can't get the heart but then you won't feel the yeah. heart aspect so another yeah. role that we had a cast on this film that you sometimes don't on your other movies is a composer yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. we have a question right. of Antoine in South Africa what made you decide on Junkie XL to compose the score well I, I the name. a lot of times compose <laughs> I, know, I mean <laughs> I a lot of times rock. compose my own music but only because I've run out of money by that point <laughs> <laughs> I've always no, wanted you to hire always a compose, <laughs> You always compose your own music. This is the first time you worked with a composer, um, right? I, sometimes I've worked, I've worked with some composers before where they co composed stuff right. for me. But this was Junkie. I heard his score for Fury Road. Yeah. Mm. We talked about it after we saw Fury Road. We were both Fantastic. blown away by yeah. George, not just George Miller's work, but the music. Yeah. Propulsive, action. Galloping score. But, but yeah. the heart theme of the. Of, um, you know, the Sorrows theme was just so fantastic. And I thought he, he could bring the motorball aspect of Alita. The he can bring the battle and the angel, you mm -hmm. know, to this. Yes. So he, uh, I, I met with him and we got along great. He's got such a great ear and just knows how to construct music that can just both drive a sequence and, and yet have you dream about a character and a world. It must be tough just for him working know. with a director who's also a, a composer, composer yeah. and musician. And it's the, I think it's easier because you speak you, that language too. I mean, right. And you don't really even need to, you know, you don't have to be a composer to talk to another composer. You're just talking purely about story. Yeah. But you can then talk about certain, what kind of chord Specific structure we're we looking at, what kind of musicality yeah. we're looking for, what kind of simplicity in, in its and its themes are we looking for so that they can yeah. come together. Because you've done the job. You've had to string yeah. a movie together and make it feel like a cohesive whole with, mm -hmm. with notes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but I, I tend to let him write and then I just respond. And yeah. my response is usually picking my jaw up off the And Alita's <laughs> theme, when we hear it, when-, when it's so beautiful. In the, in the clips we showed, yeah. and you hear Alita's theme in this very, uh, you know, very profound moment. Um, it's made the hair on my neck stand up. It was so brilliant, and it, and it, and it, and it made me think, this is Alita. Yeah. Like it really did. So be beyond that, though, th there's a whole world to Alita. And we have a question from Philippe in France, Jim. Could you tell us more about- Bonjour, the Philippe. Bonjour. Could you tell us more about the mythology of mm. Alita? Well, Alita is a story that takes place in the future of a future. So our future, went along technological progression up to a point and then it went off a cliff in what's called the fall which is an apocalypse that that basically devastated the earth's population and the survivors kind of collapsed to the one remaining city the one remaining sky city of zalem and so the the hopefully if this film makes money we'll go on and we'll and we'll continue the story and the story plays out across a number of, uh, as, as Jackie Earl Haley's character says, world, worlds above worlds above worlds. And uh, so you have the underworld, where his character's from, and then you have the world of Iron City, which is on the ground, and then you've got the world of Zalem, which is the, the shining city in the sky that everybody wants to get to. So if you thought of it as, as the movie takes place in Tijuana and you're looking over the border at the skyscrapers right. of San Diego the entire time, wondering what's there in the promised land. That's, right. that's that's what this film is about. That's what Hugo's dream is to go to to go to Zalem. Then above Zalem, there are other worlds above that as well, which we won't we won't discuss until we <laughs> get to the line. If Hugo we're so lucky as to make another such one. Such an expansive universe that it, they could go on. It's a big universe. Um, yeah. almost as much as the avatars. Yeah. Actually, Maybe. <laughs> bigger bigger in a way because it's really a uh, an interplanetary mm -hmm. story, That's right. ultimately. And, and That's what I love about Jimmy. Saying, Did I ever tell you about this other trilogy I came up with for the other planet? <laughs> <laughs> so goes, hey, we can go real deep on this. Yeah, we like, can. Wow. Yeah, it just kind of opens up if in kind of fractal detail. If you read the detail, books, right? you're like, it goes on. And you can't explain what happens no. in Last Order. You're, no. It's like, nanobots, she's a butterfly, just chill. 
you, you don't know. You don't know. It's, you don't know. It's just cool and beautiful. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, I mean, the thing about the books is that they're 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 fresh, they're imaginative, yeah. they're cutting edge, they're, they're beautiful, funny. they're horrifying. Yeah. Oh, God, I mean, yeah. they're terrifying. You know, we we can't go quite as far down that that path in a PG-13 film as Kashiro goes. Yeah. You know, but, but we can allude to it. Yeah. But one of the great things, too, one of my big thrills was when Kashiro came to visit the set. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's a man of very few spoken words, incredible on the rampage. Mm -hmm. And to see the smile on his face when he walked into Iron City, yeah. the world that he created, and how you guys in the designs held true to that on the page. And uh, he did a wonderful message, mm -hmm. Jim, uh, that Robert Rose and I shared at Comic Con on Friday, where he talked about how thrilled he was with everything he's seen. and. I think to see his character brought to life, yeah. right. you know, yeah. no one ever shows up on a set at a good time, right? You know, when people visit the set, it's always like a close-up of a teacup. Or yeah, something. <laughs> and showed up right when there's a moment in the trailer that we just saw, where she gets angry with Ito and smashes the table. Yeah. table. He yeah. was there right when we shot that, so I was like, what? What? And it's a frame What's from the book. book. You could actually frame find that. Book frame yes, in a, in I know. Her, I colored her, it. Yeah. So, <laughs> and yeah. when he walked yeah. in, I remember I ran right up to him, and I wrapped my arms around his neck, and he was like, Alita. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, this is her, because that's her. She's just like, hi. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's this, but she's also this, but she's well, also see, this. See, this is the arc that you had to create because as she recovers a sense of who she was and she gathers information about who she used to be, she goes from this carefree, very young, Doll very -like open, girl. curious, yes. and loving spirit yes. to something quite a bit darker. Yes. And she has to wrestle with that. She has to wrestle with the demon of her past. And I think that's what's amazing about the journey. And it also, the father-daughter love story, it's also very much, I think, about female empowerment and the difficulty of a father letting go of a daughter and letting her be who she is going to be, regardless of, of what that is. It has to be yeah. her vision of and her life. And she's going to be she's gonna who do she it. wants to be, who yeah. she's meant to be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you don't get to play those roles all the time as a woman, and it was such a, I mean, but it's as universal to all people. I mean, we all feel uh, insignificant. We can all feel like, you know, we, we, we don't have the ability to change anything. We right. can all feel powerless. But I think what's beautiful about this story is that she goes on this journey and she discovers that she does have, and I think that that's the theme. You know, like we all have that ability. When we dig deep and we search within, we all have the ability to change our circumstances yeah. and possibly the circumstances for of a large group of right, people. Right, right. So, See, yeah. Not only does she discover her power, which is vast. Oh, yeah but she discovers her morality and her humanity humility, yeah. and her humility as well. And her heart. Yeah, so, and, and her heart's heart so beautiful. Rate, uh, yeah, it's just like, yeah. So she even shows it to us. Yeah, she's like, here it is. <laughs> and, I, and that's, you know, that's very me. Uh, and so for you guys to pick up on that, <laughs> just from the room was, was uh -huh. yeah, I am very much. So in terms of playing way. this character, fan site from Brazil wants to know. Brazil! What was the hardest scene in the film for you to do? I mean, they were all brilliant. And even if they were challenging, I, I was pinching myself the whole time. We always joke, uh, we're not gonna have anything left to pinch. No, it's like for three years. Uh, it's all red right there. Um, I guess the hardest scene uh, for me, there were two. One is emotional, one is physical. You know, I'm not Alita. I am Alita, but I, in my real life, I, I you, are. you know, I, um, I'm not as, how could you possibly as strong Nobody as her? Nobody could be her, strong you know, as no her. one can be. That's the that's kind of the point. Um, but she, there's a moment. This is the physical moment where she's, you know, she has to carry uh, a whole body, yeah. and we had a full replica of that body. And I, like, you, I, she go. Alita goes from a lot of down positions to straight up positions. Mm -hmm. And you know, I like I got my squats in on that one. Yeah, I would, yeah. this, and I pick up a whole body, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm picking up this whole body. Um, we'll, do, we'll just we'll just do it's, a, it's, a clip. You know, we'll do the yeah. Alita Buns of Steel workout. That's right. <laughs> right. Down, pick up the body up, pick up the body down. Um, but uh, but the scene where she leaves in the fit of teenage rage. Yeah. I mean. Fine. It yeah it it you know the thing about. My part of the job is that you, I feel everything. I feel everything. Yeah. And 
the, we're talking about the father daughter relationship. Christoph was brilliant in that. He's scene. so brilliant. He he's says so the most still... amazing thing you've ever heard, and he says it in a way that you utterly believe. Yeah, like this yeah. is you. You know, he's reasoning. He tells you what and you are. Like, ah, he tells me what I am, and I'm just like, I want more. And he's like, you know, the limitations and what we're talking about, uh, becoming yourself and 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 fighting to become yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's with your father. You know, that relationship is very beautiful when it's beautiful. Yeah. But when it's at when you're at odds, there's I mean, there's no one who can Definitely who can there's nothing more devastating than that. Hold you back. Yeah, and I mean, all you want to do is charge forward. That's right. Yeah. You talk about so I cried a lot that day. You, you talk about teenage rage rage. That is such a relatable characteristic for, for everybody. Oh, not for me, to, but yeah. no, I'm talk <laughs> maybe Jim and Robert about the relatability <laughs> of Alita's character because you know, I That's think what I loved about when I first read Jim's script, I was like, I identify with everyone in this script. I right. identify with not just Christoph, I mean, the, you know, Christoph's character having a daughter, because I have a daughter who's the same age, but also the Hugo character. And I identify with Alita, somebody who comes from, you know, some place where they feel like they're insignificant or this place, I didn't come from the best place. And what, what can I possibly contribute to the mm -hmm. world? Mm -hmm. And they find their true significance through that. Um, you, that's, a, that's a journey everybody can, can hear. That's a story you should hear today. And uh, so I just found it very relatable and what Jim made sense, make it grounded, make it believable. We're gonna have so much flights of fancy throughout mm -hmm. the movie. No one will buy it if it's not believable. So through the casting, through the, through the way it's written, through the way the drama plays out, you've gotta believe that you're there and then you'll believe everything. Yeah. And 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 stick with the story, and which doesn't sound unique, but it is unique it, it's when people very think unique. that way. I mean, when you well, gave me a 180 page draft that I had to, to squeeze down, down yeah. that was what drove it. That that's what where the pinpoint. That's what the, I gave the, you the a novel. Was you gave me a script. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jim, not only did you give him a novel, but you gave him I think like how many pages? Of no only some of the notes. <laughs> 600 pages. I, notes. I edited it down from 1,200 to 600. I didn't want to overwhelm them. Just so I could find <laughs> no, it's a world. And, and, and everything, oh, so everything said the same thing. It all pointed towards the story and the characters and the relatability of it, which is yeah. essential in science fiction. Now that I've been through the Jim Cameron science fiction film school, that really makes sense. I wrote up a manual for how to, for, for like, you know, the, how to be a cyborg. How to be a cyborg. Like, because one day, you know, you, know. Woke, you woke up in a, in a machine body. Right. And it's like, all right, well, how does this work? Uh, everything you know? from how her body works, what her body is made of, how she feels, uh, how, how she might feel, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, to, to quotes, to, to a little backstory. I mean, I got a five, I said, does Jim have any notes? I got a five page, uh, I call it the five page declaration of Alita. Uh, and it was immensely helpful. To know what I, I mean, to know what I am. Right. You told me what I am. You're my Ito. <laughs> you, know? you know, when you think about Jim's movies, that's what he does in everything. You know, everything right. is relatable. Everything, yep. no matter how out there the idea is, he finds a way to make it relatable. And that's where I think others can get lost in the technical You got that. Technical you suit. got that because that's you're right. cutting down 180 pages down to 129 pages, but you kept her eating a piece of chocolate and falling in love with chocolate. Right, right. You kept her eating an orange for the first time and, and not knowing to take <laughs> the peel off and getting a look on her face. It told you so much in that right. one moment. She's never seen an orange. She doesn't know what it's called. Everything is right. new. Right? And she doesn't know to take the peel off. And even though she has a machine body, she has taste receptors so that when she bites through the, the orange from the outside, this is in, I'm not giving away a big spoiler here. This yeah, is yeah. in like minute two. Uh, <laughs> It, she, her face wrinkles up, and you realize, well, she may she may be a, ha, have a synthetic body, but she's got a human brain, and the technology of the day allows her to have taste receptors and touch receptors and everything else. So she's very, very human. That's she's right. just kind of alt body. That was human. the other thing you know. that made it relatable is that it made sure because in cyborgs in the Terminator films didn't have human brains. No, so, but in this. Cyborgs do because uh, any advanced AI is outlawed in Iron City, so it right. has a human organic brain, which makes even somebody who is made up of high tech body wear is relatable because they have a human brain. So and and the, guns are outlawed, which means that everything falls back into a kind of a martial mm -hmm. arts kind of kind of you know metaphor. Combat and they style, can have yeah. swords and they can have other weapons, edge weapons and so on, but no guns. Yeah. So it's kind of the anti-Terminator movie. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Terminator movies are gun movies. <laughs> this is the op opposite. Right, so we have this relatable character. And a question from Zoe from China. Zoe. What is the Yo, one area Zoe. that took the most effort to actually bring Alita to life? The, 
the one thing that made Alita the hardest bring thing. It, the, the hardest thing to bring her to life. Well, it blew me away from the very beginning when we when I first asked him about this project, and he showed me, you know, behind behind the curtain and showed me uh, early um, art that he did for the version he was going to do back in 2005. You were going to attempt mm -hmm. this, right? Um, which we barely had the the technology the tech now. now. I know, I know. <laughs> but that's Jim was always pushing technology. He knew that the art had to push it. Um, was the artwork he had, and you saw Alita with the with the ivory body, and with the with the anime eyes, and it was just so striking. I thought we got to do that. If we were going to do that in 2005, we have to do that now. Mm -hmm. Sure, mm -hmm. we've never seen it photo real before. We've yeah. seen manga and anime since Astro Boy in the 30s, but we've never seen it photo real. It would be such a great journey to take the audience into that world for the very first time. Mm -hmm. So to nail the look of Alita was the thing that Jim had already gotten really far on back in 2005 and then we just kept building on and constantly refining and Jim knows eyes better than anyone what makes them come to life just from all the work that you, we, we benefited so much from the work you did on Avatar the irony is we cast I know we a did. young <laughs> actor with the most amazing big brown beautiful eyes in Hollywood Thank you. and then we went we can't have those little <laughs> tiny eyes. We have to have giant eyes. My mom goes, they look the same. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, right. no. So I, <laughs> I, 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 think, them. I think we have time for one more last question, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> ask it of, of each one of you. So we'll start with Rose. It's the same question. Love to know from each one of you, what would you say the film is ultimately about? Well, for me, for my part of it, I would say the film is about... Uh, looking inward, discovery, um, and, and in that being vulnerable enough to do that. I mean, it's, you have to be a brave person to challenge yourself in that way. Um, external things are kind of easy to understand. I mean, it's right there. And there's explanations attached to them. But what's going on inside is, is the real universe. I mean, the real universe, the real infinity is within. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that it is, a, it is essentially about um, people, uh, and, and in, in particular one uh, girl um, who is trying to um, discover and understand her own infinity. Mm. Robert? Yeah. That was excellent. Oh, we're done. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> we're done with that. <laughs> you know, the character of Alita is fascinating. She, she doesn't remember a lot coming into the world. She's forgotten a lot due to, to, to whatever accident she had gone through. And it shows that you couldn't pretty much get through life not having to remember a whole lot. <laughs> and if there's one thing you should never forget is your humanity. And that's the one thing you should always hold on to. If you're going to forget anything, don't forget that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what my, my biggest takeaway from the story was. I always saw it as a, as a story of, of personal empowerment for a young girl. I wrote it at the time when, when my daughter was 13, I think. And, uh, you know, I, I saw it as, you know, women often have a hard time finding their voice in a male-dominated world. Uh, Harnessing their power. Yeah, exactly. And learning to, to um, trust yourself and have confidence and deal with your own strength. And sometimes that strength can be almost out of control. Um, and, and find your own kind of moral compass mm -hmm. within that you know, and, and maintain the relationships with the people around you even, even while you're struggle, struggling with your own identity. I don't think it's exclusively a female thing. I think every teenager goes through this. It's about teen angst in the sense of who am I? What, what's my role in the world? What am I here to do, you know? And, Why uh, am I here? Yeah, and how much do I have to break away from my parents to become that thing and how much do I still honor them and, and what, they're, what they've given me, you know? Um, so, you know, it's a very human story. It's just told in, very, in a very different world with very different kinds of people. But I think, you know, uh, it's about the universe. I think science fiction works best, and you were talking about this before, when first of all, it's in the details, and secondly, it's about the universality of, of the kind of experience that people have. Mm. And I know we're wrapping up, and I know that was the last question. I just want to say here in front of the the world, the people that are leaning forward. I'll marry how, you. No, I'm, how <laughs> I'm married. How proud I am to have gotten to work and play in this creative sandbox with both of you guys. Same with you, my Thank gosh, you. and you and John. 
What a dream this has been. Thank and you too, buddy. Uh, <laughs> well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Jim needs to get back to the Avatar sequels. Robert needs to get back to finishing the movie so we can share it with everybody who's out there waiting. But I really want to thank Robert, Rosa, Jim for, for the time. And most importantly, though, I want to thank you, the fans, for uh, tuning in whichever way you're watching today. It means a lot to us. We cannot wait to share the whole movie with you this December. But before then, let's take one more look at the trailer. Thanks again. Du hast mir die Geschichte vom Krieg erzählt, als die Erde ja zitterte und der Himmel brannte. Von denen, die überlebt haben. Die erwacht sind in einer anderen Welt. In der die Mächtigen die Schwachen ausbeuten. Aber so muss es nicht sein. Als ich dich fand, war dein sehr menschliches Gehirn auf wundersame Weise intakt. Nichts fühlt sich einsamer an, als nicht zu wissen, wer man ist. Mit der Zeit kommt die Erinnerung. Alita ist neu hier. Sie hat noch einiges zu lernen. Es ist eine grausame Welt. Ich zeig dir was. Dieser Körper. Ich spüre eine Verbindung zu ihm, die ich nicht erklären kann. Du weißt mehr über mich, als du sagst. Alita, es gibt Dinge, die man besser vergisst. Dann werde ich es selbst rausfinden. Alita, lauf! Mein Gott. Sie ist die letzte ihrer Art. In ihr stecken Technologien, die 300 Jahre lang verloren waren. Sie ist eine Gefahr für die natürliche Ordnung. Alita? Sie werden dich holen. Dann werde ich mich ihnen stellen. Bring dich in Sicherheit, du musst hier weg. Heute Nacht ist kein Spiel. Es ist eine Jagd. Du musst sie zerstören. Du hast gerade den größten Fehler deines Lebens gemacht. Ich gehöre zu ihr. Alita Battle Angel. Nur im Kino.